Hi guys, this is Mike and you are going to learn how to solve the 2x2 two two Rubik's Cube. The way I'm going to teach it to you will require only two algorithms and one of them is pretty short, only four moves. And these same algorithms will carry over directly to the Rubik's Cube. Once you know the 2x2, two two, the way I'm going to explain it, you'll be halfway to getting the full Rubik's Cube. You'll just need to learn how to deal with the edge pieces of the Rubik's Cube. There are, of course, no edge pieces on the 2x2. Two two. First of all, let me go over a little bit of mechanics. With all these puzzles, I think beginners have a tendency to think of them in terms of stickers or in terms of single sides of a piece. No, all these puzzles consist of pieces. Uh, for example, this piece here is white, blue, and orange. You need to position the pieces and then orient them correctly. I am going to teach this to you in two steps. First is to solve the uh, top white layer and then the bottom yellow layer. So let's just, oh, before I jump right in, let me explain a little bit of notation. U means to rotate the upper layer clockwise like this. U prime is to rotate it counterclockwise like this. R means to rotate the right side clockwise like this. R prime means to rotate it counterclockwise like this. L means to rotate the left side clockwise like this. L prime means to rotate the left side counterclockwise like that. F means to rotate the front clockwise like that, and F prime means to rotate it counterclockwise like that. And if I say something like U2, it means to rotate the upper side or the top twice. For example, this would be a U2, 1, 2. And you can do it in either direction that you like because 180 degrees gets you to the same place in either direction. Okay, that said, I think we're ready to start solving this thing. Okay, our Rubik's Cube is scrambled and we're ready to start solving it. We can always define at least one piece as already being in the correct position and orientation and then just simply build our way around it. Uh, since I immediately see this one with white on top, always go with one that has white on top and define that as your, shall we say, starting correct piece. Next, look for another piece that has white and either green or red. I see here's one directly underneath it that has white and green, so this one qualifies. Then, what we want to do is Consider the location where you want it to go. I want it to go right here. I want white to touch white here and green to touch green here. Then what I want to do is you want to put that location on top where the piece that you located is supposed to go. Put it on the front top and it could either be on the left or the right side. In this case it's on the left. Then put the piece you want to position there on the bottom front such that the white side of that piece is facing off to the side like this one here. So everything's ready to go. Here's the location I want the piece to go. Here is the piece that I want to place there. This is in the front, this is in the front, the white is facing off to the side. So we're ready to go and it's really simple. Move the piece that is where you want your good piece to go down to the bottom, like that. Then slip the piece you want to put there in that position, like that. And then move it back up to the top. And there you go. This is in the right location and right position. So two down, two to go. Let's look for another one. Okay, so again, 
we want to find a piece that is white on one side and in this case orange on the other. So we would want to put it here, white to touch white, orange to touch orange. And I see it's right here. So let's just do the same thing we did before. Here's the correct location, put it in the front. In this case it's on the left again. Here's the piece we want to put there. Put that on the front too, but have the white facing off to the side. Then bring the correct location to the bottom. Rotate the piece you want to put there in that position and then rotate it to the top. And there we go. You see white touches white, orange touches orange. So we just have one more to go. And here it is right here. Now, what I just said is not going to work for this piece because there's no way you're going to get this white to face off to the side because it's on the bottom. So here is what you do in this situation where the white is facing down. You put it below any position on top that hasn't been solved yet. Then move that position down to the bottom like we've been doing before and then rotate the bottom twice. One, two, and then rotate that um, side back up to the top. So now we're still in the same position but we rotated that, that cube that we need to place up here. So now we can do the maneuver that I just said before. In this case we want the correct location is on the top right side and the cube we want to place there is on the bottom with the white facing off to the side correctly. Then again we rotate the correct location to the bottom, then swing the bottom until that piece that we want to place on top is in the right position. And you can tell it's in the right position because blue touches blue here, white touches white here, and then rotate it back to the top. And there we have our white face completed. Let me run through this again just to make sure you understood it. Here is a situation you get sometimes where there are no white pieces on the bottom. They're all on the top, but they are not necessarily in the right place. Now I can tell these two here are already in the right place because white touches white, orange touches orange. So those two are good, but these two are wrong because these colors don't match, those don't match, those don't match. And you're not going to find the correct pieces on the bottom because they're on the top. They're just reversed. So let's bring one of these wrong pieces to the bottom and we can do that by again moving, we'll call this the correct location because some other piece needs, because we're just going to put any random piece there. So move it to the bottom, then move the, bo the bottom layer until some other piece is there which will push the incorrect piece out of the way and then move that back to the top. So now we have a white piece on the bottom where we want it. Then find where it needs to go and again we're looking for two colors in common, white and blue, white and blue. So this needs to go up here. So like I told you before, put, this is the correct location, put it on the top front it doesn't matter whether it's on the left or the right. In this case it's on the left. Move the correct piece that you want to put up here on the top bottom with the white facing off to the side like that. Then move that correct position to the bottom. Rotate the bottom until the correct piece is in that correct position and then just swing it back up to the top. And finally, we just have one piece to go. Uh, we know this must go here because there's only one left. So, again, here is the correct 
position, here is the correct piece. The correct position is in the top front. The correct piece is in the bottom front, white facing off to the side. Move the correct position to the bottom and then rotate the bottom until the correct piece is in that position you just swung to the bottom and then swing it back up to the top. And there we go. Our top layer is done again. Okay guys, ready to go on to the next stage. That is solving the bottom here. But we are going to turn this upside down so the incorrect pieces are now on top. This part of the solution is broken down into two sub steps. One of them is putting the pieces in the correct position and then orienting them correctly. What we want to do at this point is to rotate this top here until we find a situation where either one is in the correct position or all four of them are. And you will always be able to find some situation where that's true. If you find two in the correct position, keep on turning because odd numbers are good. So, okay, let's just, because we stopped here, let's count how many are in the right position. This one is, and we know because, like I said before, a piece is going to be in the correct position if it, bore, if it has two colors in common of a piece that's already in the correct position. So the piece that must go here must have green and orange as well as yellow on top. Here's our green, orange, and yellow. So that's in the correct position. Let's then check the other pieces without rotating this, just rotating the whole cube. Is this right? Yes, it is. Is this right? No. Is this right? No. So remember I said that even numbers are bad. So let's rotate this top, either direction you want, and count again. Is this right? No. Yes. No. No. And if the count were zero, then you would just rotate it again. So one is in the correct place. Put that one correct one in the top right side in the front, and then do this. Upper, right, upper prime, left prime, up, right prime, up prime, left. What that does is it keeps the one correctly positioned piece just as it is, but it rotates the upper other three. So sometimes you need to do this once and sometimes twice. So let's count again. And by counting, rotate the whole cube, don't rotate the top. So this one is already right. Um, we don't even need to count it because it was right before. This is correct, this is correct, and this is correct. So now we are ready to go on to the second step of the second step, which is to orient the top pieces. Okay, here we go, orienting the top pieces. So they are already all in the correct position. Then what we want to do is to take what was formerly our top layer and move it to the left. So the right layer, I mean the right side, is completely correct and the left side is wrong. Now. Sometimes some of these pieces will already be in the correct orientation. In this case, none of them are because I see no yellow here on the left side. So what we want to do is to put any incorrect piece in the top, front, left position. And you can tell it's incorrect because, because this side here on the left is not yellow. And then we are going to repeat this algorithm until this front, top, left piece has yellow here. Right prime, up prime, right, up. Is it yellow? No, so do it again. Right prime, up prime, right, up. Is it yellow? Yes. So now what we're going to do is consider this correct and then move it without 
changing without changing the position of your right side here, move another incorrect piece to the top left. So this is incorrect because yellow is not here on the left side and then do that same algorithm again until we get yellow here. Right prime, upper prime, right up. Is it yellow? No. So repeat. Right prime, upper prime, right up. Is it yellow? No. So repeat. Right prime, upper prime, right up. Nope. Right prime, upper prime, right up. Is it yellow? Yes. So now this one is right. Move another incorrect one to the um, top left. And this one is incorrect because we don't have yellow here. And by the way, don't worry if it looks like you're screwing up other stuff. Just keep doing it and everything will write itself in the end. Right prime, upper prime, right up. Nope, it's not yellow. Right prime, upper prime, right up. Nope. Right prime, upper prime, right up. Nope. Right prime, upper prime, right up. Is it yellow? Yes, it is. So now this one is in the correct orientation. So just one more to go. This one here, and we know it's wrong because it's not yellow here. And then just keep repeating. And again, do not get freaked out that some stuff here on the right side, which is supposed to be your correct side, doesn't look correct. Trust me, it will work itself out in the end. But, you know, do not go rotating the whole cube. You have to keep what you're touching here on the right side the same, or you'll screw everything up. So, right prime, upper prime, right up. Is it yellow? No. Right prime, upper prime, right up. Is it yellow? Yes. So now our yellow side is done, and now we just have to rotate it. So, the, so that it's solved. And there we go, the two by two Rubik's Cube is solved. So, uh, thanks for watching guys. I hope this video made sense and the pacing was not too slow and not too fast. Again, those algorithms that I just said are directly applicable to the Rubik's Cube. If you watch my tutorial on the Rubik's Cube or lots of other ones, you will see, hey, I remember that from Mike's 2x2. Two two. Um, and you won't have to, it'll cut down the memorization of this in half. So with that, I um, think there is nothing left to say. If, if speed is really important to you and you're willing to memorize more, you can cut down your speed in solving this to easily under 10 seconds, but it just requires a lot of memorization. There's always a trade-off between memorization and speed. And the way I like to explain these things minimizes memorization and to heck with speed. So, yep, yeah, that's it guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.